I'm Lily Gaylor, filling in for Jane Pisisali, and this is Living History Art Watch with a focus on local art and art history happenings in our area. I've got a terrible head cold today, and so do two of my guests, so please bear with us all as we, um, with our hoarse voices and constant sneezing. <laughs> anyway, um, my guests in the studio today are Andrea Strang, owner of the new beautiful art gallery, Gallery 222 in Malvern, artist and art teacher, Randall Graham, and accomplished painter, Heather Davis. Before I get to the guests, in keeping with the historic bent of Jean's Living History radio show, let's go back in time a bit to 1917, 100 years ago. Big events, art and otherwise, in 1917 started the Rep Russian Revolution. Also, the emergence of the Dada movement that led to the Surrealism movement. Marcel Duchamp, a famous Dada and Surrealist artist, tried to exhibit a urinal he called Fountained, which was rejected for the show, but later photographed by famed photographer Alfred Stieglitz. He made the urinal famous, and ta-da, the Dada movement was brought mainstream. Also, at the same time, Impressionist painter Claude Monet was busy on his famous Water Lily series. Picasso and Brock were experimenting with Cubism. There was a whole lot going on in 1917, an amazing time in art history. Closer to home, 1917, Andrew Wyeth was born. They're planning a blockbuster show at the Brandywine River Museum of Art this spring and also at the Summer Mill Manning Gallery to celebrate the centennial. Also in 1917, Scribner published NCY's Incredible Illustrations for Robin Hood and also The Boy's King Arthur. Now to our show today. Please welcome Andrea Strang to Living History. She is the proud owner and curator of the newest gallery in our area, Gallery 222 in Melbourne. She opened her doors to Gallery 222 in September. Let me tell you, this, is, this place is unlike any other gallery, and art enthusiasts as well as art newbies are taking notice. As well as an exhibition space, Gallery 222 is also home to several art studios, including that of accomplished plein air painter Randall Graham, who is with us in the studio today. Randall is a representational oil painter known for his en plein air landscapes and his en ran air, he, he made that up, uh, paintings <laughs> that incorporate <laughs> raindrops on a window. He teaches a painting, um, painting out of his studio in Malvern, and he currently lives in Westchester with his wife and three children. Our third guest today is award-winning painter Heather Davis, who will be fe the featured artist at Gallery 222 in January. She's a local oil painter who left her thriving construction business after 30 years following an aha moment at a Jamie Wyeth exhibit back in 2013. She consequently dropped everything to pursue her passion for painting and never looked back. Both Randall and Heather have won prestigious Plan Air Awards, and we welcome them both here today. Hello. So, <laughs> hi guys. Hey. Um, hey. So, Andrea, tell us something about um, Gallery 222. You opened in September. Can you describe the gallery a bit for us so we can get to know it a little bit better? Sure. I, um, it used to be the old picket fence, <clears throat> and it's right there on King Street in Malvern, and I pretty much uh, renovated it. And I wanted a gallery that, um, when you walked in, it was a special place. Like, you knew you walked in to have an experience. I didn't want it to be an art shop. I didn't, you know, I wanted it to be clean lines. And I think that's what I got. A lot of white walls, clean lines, and it's not pretentious. There's a beautiful country kitchen where... I end up having conversations over the island. I mean, it really, I want to welcome more and more people in just just to look at the uh, art from the local artist. You know, that's my challenge, is to get people who don't normally go to galleries to come in and see um, the work. That's a hard thing to do, though, the mixing of the warm, cozy feel that yes. you're talking about and then still giving a contemporary art space. I mean, the lighting is amazing. It's mm -hmm. white walls. It's super clean. She right. shows that you should really see the shows. Uh, they're hung so well. The artist's work is very well represented. But again, there is that kind of yeah. cozy, not cozy, but very comfortable feel. And that's what I'm trying to capture because I never, I felt like there was like a disconnect where I knew a lot of artists that were so cool and laid back, but yet <laughs> the galleries were so intimidating. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I didn't want an intimidating gallery. Mm -hmm. that's so true. that's kind of what I'm struggling with. 
Last time I was over at your gallery, you were doing something with Rhoda Caller, and um, mm -hmm. she was the featured artist last month. And there was a neat um, artist talk afterwards, yes. and you filled up the space with chairs, and it was standing room only, of course. But mm -hmm. and then there was food in the kitchen, and it was just this wonderful mix of um, artists, art lover. Just yeah. chat all yes. over the place. Well, and good I, sales, too, by the way. Yeah, right, <laughs> uh, which always helps. But I felt that the gallery talk went on for, what, 30 minutes, but then everyone stayed mm -hmm. till 10 o'clock, just <laughs> in the kitchen. It's like, an art party. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what I, that's what I really, that's what jazzes me. It's just making new friendships and the conversation is art you know it's it's I love that. and meeting all the uh, you know her her followers some are artists themselves so it was so interesting to meet them so it was just really it's, well, that was a really fun night and that's a great choice too Rhoda's awesome she's a good friend and yeah. um, oh. she's so interesting to talk to as is um, Heather coming mm -hmm. up so she'll be your January featured yes. artist yes I'm so excited that's really exciting. I knew Heather before I even <laughs> opened the gallery it was kind of like it's still a dream to me and I met her through family and um, I went to the art show Radley Run I think you were over yeah, there I and I true. loved her stuff <laughs> so I'm so excited uh, I think you were the first one on the docket. Like, well, yeah. you know, one of the coolest things for me was being one of the first people to see in your in your building before you had renovated yes. it. Yes. You oh, saw it was it the before. coolest. It what was, was it coolest. like inside, actually? I didn't see it before. Well, Pretty it hammered. Yeah, it oh, was. Was it dark colors? I mean, you, you have it so light and bright. Yes. What it was, it was a gift shop, and it was a lovely, lovely gift shop and a private home. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it it had a drop ceiling that I removed. Um, there was a, there was different flooring. Um, and it was it didn't take that much, but you saw it through the construction process where I think the floor was ripped up and it was. Did you see her vision? Because I mean, Heather's background was construction. I mean, yeah. you must right. Have, and that's the so family. Good. That's the family work. <laughs> oh, get out! Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, oh, no, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. the world's best carpenter. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> yes, that's really is. cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, he he he. Uh, also got the same vibe I did. He wanted the opportunity to be creative, and he, he was. And the oh. whole space is just fantastic. It's mm -hmm. just the best space. It doesn't feel like a gift shop, and it doesn't feel uptight at all. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, good. But That's still beautifully hung, though. Oh, also, great sense beautiful. of light. I mean, that mm -hmm. is actually an old kind of building. You don't think there's so much light, but you yes. really made it happen. And, Randy, you have a funny story about yeah. how you got connected with Gallery 222, which is something I've, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, when, I, a heard, child. Yeah, when I heard Andrea was... Uh, changing the picket fence which you mentioned to artist studios i was bugging her pretty fast I'm like yes. hey hey i'm randy i'm an artist and she just kind of like slow down but yeah I grew, up, I, I grew up close friends with the family that owned the picket fence um it's been in their family for 100 mm. years until yes. andrew stole it from them. I, know. I know but um no they they sold it to Beth, uh, who was the owner of the picket fence, and she was in the family too. And uh, Beth gave me my first paid art job when I was 18 oh to God. paint a mural on the side of the picket fence. Is it still there? No, hey. thank thank goodness. Because yeah, I mean, I yeah. loved, when I did it at 18, I was like, this is gonna change the art world. But it was awful. I mean, it was one color. It was a fence with birds and flowers. But it was there for like 15 years. But I, I think I did not paint over. No. It. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so it's great. This is coming full circle, and I get it to totally hang out is. there every day, and it's mm -hmm. just a great vibe, and it's hard to say on radio, but, but yeah, mm -hmm. everyone should check it out, because Andrea has done a great job, and it's yeah. just a great vibe, always. Mm -hmm. But also, like, in the spring and summer, people can sit outside, correct? Oh, in the yes. back, it looks oh, really... Yeah. I saw it on the online. I was like, wait a minute. I, mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of wintry right now, but it looks like a terrific it space. Is. On our opening, we had a uh, band in the back corner. Oh, and that. So it's perfect for second weddings and, and um, showers and, and whatnot, but it does go back... Uh, further than you think, and there is a cottage yeah, a that eventually uh, will redo and uh, 
put another artist. I think Randy's got <laughs> yeah, it up. You think? <laughs> in, that art, in the cottage. I was part. wondering if that was a studio yes, or. That's, yeah. That will be a studio. Be an Airbnb too. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, yes. Andrew's already had people. What do you have? A oh. business meeting? Like, people are just bugging her to rent yes. space because it's yes. a different sort of. Oh, congratulations. Venue for mm-hmm. doing cool things, you know. That's yes. really cool. And also yeah. good for sculpture, too. You can, yes. I know uh, Rhoda and Mike had some of their sculpture oh. outside. How fun was you can that? just kind of see a peek of it. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, when it's warmer, are you going to have more of a sculpture garden yes, going? Yes, I would love to. Yes, that's the plan. Yeah, that's so. great. Put a gallery yeah. in there. Yeah. I remember, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about a little bit about um, uh, Heather and Randy have something in common besides being painters. Um, they're mostly known for their plan air work, and then that means going outside, guys. It's not that hard. But um, <laughs> anyway, so um, and they've both won very prestigious awards in our area. There's a Brandywine Plan Air uh, contest that uh, benefits the Children's um, Beach House, and in Delaware, and it's a really terrific uh, competition, and uh, people from all over the country go to it. And uh, a couple of years ago, Heather won the prize as the um, as well the excellent the excellence award. And last year, um, in just this past fall, mm-hmm. uh, Randall Graham won it. And um, so it's pretty exciting, and there's pretty stiff competition. Um, so. You know, kudos to you guys. Um, do you want to talk about plein air painting? Because it's daunting for some people. It's kind of scary to get outside the studio and uh, put yourself out to the elements and paint very fast, really. I mean, that's the idea of it, or is that just a myth? Do you have to paint fast? Can you go slow at it? Can you still keep the painter that you are, or do you have to change it up? Heather? Well, I, I tend to draw slow, make a decent layout, and then start splashing. I, I find that if I have a competent view ahead of time of the drawing and what I think the painting's going to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what it's got to offer, what are the, what are the key places where light's going to splash or something's going to change on me when I get the paint out, then I can pretty much... This is an evolution, though. I mean, mm-hmm. it took a while to get this feeling, and then I can pretty much paint and let the paint be loose and let the paint be paint because I have my guidelines and I don't have to look up and draw and I don't have to look up and measure and I don't have to, because I'm big on accuracy mm-hmm. with my drawings. So, uh, and it's starting to cut loose really well right now. I'm really <laughs> finally <laughs> having some fun. <laughs> well, what, what time of paintings will you be showing at Gallery 222 this January? This show is really my show to honor the historic, iconic properties of the Brandywine Valley. Oh, I love that. And, yeah, I love them. I was a builder, as you know, for so long, and I love these places. It makes sense now. She's one of the few people that makes, you know, houses actually look like houses that are not toppling <laughs> over. <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> There's an accuracy and honor to the... Pro- and yes, that makes an sense. honor. Yes. <laughs> My code of honor. Correct. Mm-hmm. And also, um, in your bio, uh, you uh, were struck by um, a show of Jamie Wyeth. But I know that you really like yeah. Andrew Wyeth. I, so it's I interesting do. that you were... I do. Um, it, 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 I can't say it was just particularly Jamie Wyeth's work, or that that's the work that tr- it triggered some kind of uh, <laughs> mental episode, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better way to explain it. But I, I, I had distinct images in my head as I looked at probably... It was the um, the Monhegan show <laughs> with Rockwell Kent. Oh, I love... Oh. And... Uh, Are we taking a break now? Oh, sorry. Hey, hey, guys, this is my first radio show, and I just got a note saying break. So I'm not quite sure what that means. But I think it means a break's coming up, and he'll tell me when it is. But anyway, talk about the Mohican so until he cuts us off. Sorry about that. Oh. Well, um, well, I don't remember it. Rockwell Kent's one of my favorite illustrators. He's um, great. I didn't get any of these sort of flashback things when I looked at any of his, and I tried three or four times, but... Mm-hmm. There's a good half a dozen of Jamie's mm-hmm. that it was like my somehow my brain comprehended the medium, the layers, and I had never painted an oil paint. And oh, I, get out! Oh no, I had never. Well, I, maybe a couple scratches. What were things. you acrylic before? When I was in art school 30 years ago, it was, it was watercolor. Wow, I wouldn't you know, guess that. Yeah, so my splashes are starting to come back now that I've I've made some changes. Um, anyway. It was very strange watching these paintings. I had a very clear idea of why he chose what colors, mm-hmm. where he smushed the medium, where he grabbed the paint, where he mixed it. Was the, it was a weird thing. But I was seeing it visually as I was seeing the paintings. I left the gallery three or four times, went back in, and it kept happening. It was, and I just it kind of, uh, it was so consuming and so 
intense. Uh, that was a Friday night by Monday morning. I had my college stuff in my car. I'd gone to the art store. I loaded up, and I knew if I was going to be any good, I had to get out and do the hard thing, the way that Wyeth's, the Wyeth started. And she tradition. does, too. She works at this every <laughs> single day, and so does Randy. So uh, right now we're going to be taking a break, and we'll right, get right back to our guests in a moment. Do you have a wedding, graduation, baptism, confirmation, milestone, or birthday to plan? You need John Surratt Catering, one of the most highly rated and preferred caterers throughout the Philadelphia area. They will be there to create and cater your event while assisting as much or as little as you desire. Planning a decadent, over-the-top company gala? Need help transforming your backyard into the party of the year? Want to wow your clients with a delicious luncheon? Then you need John Surratt Catering. All you have to do is call and they'll handle the rest. Located at 835 Lincoln Avenue in Westchester, visit them at SorokCatering.com or call 610-640-2836. That's 610-640-2836. If you had to choose a roofer, would you choose one with limited experience and knowledge, or would you choose a roofer certified as a master elite contractor by the largest manufacturer in the nation, GAF, a distinction shared by only 3% of the nation's roofers? I'm talking about GP Martini Roofing, who also does siding, windows, doors, and offers an ironclad guarantee that he'll repair or replace any roof for defects within its normal life. GP Martini Services... Chester, Delaware, Bucks, and Montgomery counties with free estimates and consultation and does both commercial and residential. Go to their website at martiniroofing.com for special savings or call 610-873-1696. And also, financing is available with no payments for a full year. Now, what roofer would you call? GP Martini's the answer, 610 873 1696. WCHE 1520 AM. Local news at the top of each hour and updated whenever news breaks, including on our Facebook page and our website, WCHE1520.com. Welcome back to Living History Art Watch. This is Lily Gaylor, and my be- guests today are art gallery owner Andrea Strang and artist Randall Graham and Heather Davis. Andrea Strang owns the new beautiful Gallery 222 on King Street in Malvern. Randall Graham is a plan hour artist and teacher who has a studio at 222. And artist Heather Davis will be f- the featured artist at Gallery 222 for January. So welcome again. Um, I Let's see, I wanted to plug, before we start chatting again, um, that the artist reception for Heather Davis's show is going to be Thursday, January 12th, and that's from 5.30 to 8.30. That's at Gallery 222, which is so named because it's at 222 King Street in Malvern. And uh, Google is not that great getting to it. All you have to do is go down Route 30 and take a right. It's pretty easy. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I, I, I went to a uh, previous reception, and it's a ton of fun. And um, Andrea really hangs the show so well. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Heather's beautiful paintings hung in that setting. And um, you also have another artist um, showing in the East Gallery, too. Can you tell yes. us about her? Yes. Uh, Hel- Heather uh, McMorty. She is a printmaker. And at first, uh, I'm working with this uh, Nate Dernan, and he brought her uh, to me. So uh, they both uh, attended PAFA in mm-hmm. Philadelphia. So when he said a printmaker, I said, well, I, you know, I deal with original <laughs> art. I'm not the such of prints. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> he's like, Google uh, lithography, and, and you'll learn the process. And she not only works with limestone and a big uh, print press, and there's a whole process to that, she also layers her prints. So bottom line, it's very cool wall art. Uh, it's, it's just very cool. So, um, so she, she'll be in the um, East Gallery. And then I have Audrey Tant, Tant in my gallery, and she's a watercolorist. And she's in her 80s. She's lovely. She has shown. She studied in Eng- England. 
Um, she is lovely. In fact, my sister already bought uh, one of her paintings already even oh, before cool. the show. So, um, so she's a friend of the family. So she'll she'll be in that third gallery where my uh, desk is. So when you pick your artists, is it really on quality, or is there something that there's? Is there a commonality besides quality? Is there? Are you trying to go? Okay, this will represent contemporary. This will be more traditional. Mm -hmm. This is sculptural. Yes, I'm trying to get like a breath of of uh, genre. It's like, you know, uh, the two Heathers couldn't be more different, but yet I feel like they're uh, similar because they both call on nature. Um, because uh, Heather McMorty, she uses the process the same as um, she's very interested in, in geology, like mm -hmm. the sto how stones are made, and there's a finite number of minerals can go in, and that's how she does her printing. She only has a finite n number of minerals, and then out comes something so different each time she does it. It's a surprise. It's almost like ceramic art, like Rhoda, mm -hmm. like she throws in some stuff and then it comes out, like, different. Yeah, I've always been wondering about, when I've, I've talked to Rhoda before, she'll go to all this length of trouble to make these ceramic objects, and then she throws on, you know, some sort of a glaze, and then it's like, yes. who the heck knows? But, I mean, <laughs> that is like Talk a crazy thing with knows. painters, you know, we can mess up or whatever, and you just paint over. Yes. But, um, no, yes. that sort of both entropy and uh, mm -hmm. exploration and surprise, that's part of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like a rush for them. It's like, yeah. ooh, let's and see what it is. And ceramic artists often, their fingers will be burnt, you can see, because they've been so excited to open the kiln too early, yeah. you know. Uh, it's a, it's it a is, whole different mindset. It is, yeah. it is. I do welding and it's kind so of So back similar. to your question, I, I like to get different um, ways, but there are some, they have to speak to each other, the show itself. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that can be a challenge. That's why when people um, uh, want to be put on, you know, uh, to be offered a show, I need to sit down and see who you're showing with. Absolutely. So it has to make sense to me between the three rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, but that's the fun part for me. Um, Are you going to have the artist speak? Because I really enjoyed that. I think that's such a wonderful mix. Yes, the uh, gallery talks. Yeah, more exactly. Gallery Sorry. Talks. Yeah. Yes, we're going to, um, I'm definitely going to schedule more of those. Um, what I'm interested, too, is uh, having um, someone speak. I think Nate Dernan said he was going to do this, like a collecting 101. Like, I want some gallery talks to specifically go to the non to the community the, mm -hmm. the non-artist mm -hmm. um, and uh, to kind of give them insight on the world mm -hmm. of art so I thought you know I've uh, there's got to be do's and don'ts to collecting so that's going to be uh, a topic for <laughs> for a gallery talk. I don't know what they are. I have to wait to the gallery well, Randy, talk. Both, uh, <laughs> Randy and Heather have a, a, a big following, and people like to yes. collect both of their works. Um, so, Rand, what is, is there some sort of a, a typical strain between, uh, the, of commonality between the uh, people who collect your work? Because I know that, I know so many people who have pieces of yours. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm lucky. <laughs> I don't know if there's a right answer or, or, a, or an academic answer to say do X, Y, Z and this works. Uh -huh. But, you know, I think just uh, Heather definitely does it just like me. It's just uh -huh. putting all you have into everything. Exactly. I mean, thinking compositionally, light quality, telling the story within the paintings. I mean, there's a lot of plein air painters and general painters. I mean, it's a nice practice to walk outside and look at a tree and paint it, but mm -hmm. there's just so much more you can do with it and telling the story and 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 visually has a lot more impact so i don't know why people particular people collect but they they are so excited about my work which is just some, i mean it's magical i have no idea why that happens in this world because i think it's because this is magical yeah, I think yeah. you have magic in your right. paintings so i mean it's really it's, it's just amazing that i'm that into it and someone else in the world respects it that much and I uh, you know I respect Heather to all, all ends I'm same with her as we we're we're usually the last two it's <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, we, plain air things just the sun's down and people we, yeah. are like what are you doing us two are still <laughs> standing <laughs> in a plan air painting you have to you really have a bit of a time crunch not only for the con well usually particularly for the contest but um, do you try to say okay I'm sitting down here and I know you put in your major hours but you're like when the sun goes down I am this is done yeah, yeah. or do you allow your the extra day. I mean, do you are you click? Is there 
kind for of me, a... I mean, I would prefer to go back, but I mean, I've I teach a lot, and the yeah. three kids. It's kind of I, I like doing studio work too, but the plein air is kind of a la prima. It works with my life. I enjoy it. It, it works on all levels. Um, I would love to go back more often and tweak things, but I think the main thing is having a setup. You know, a composition. What kind of light you're thinking of? Thinking of the weather. You know. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's there's a benefit to just doing studies where you're you're painting exactly what you see. It might not be a good, interesting painting, but you use all those studies to make your your plain air. Even if you're doing it in the field, it's more of a thought process. You having a plan to paint something interesting, you know. Um, do you have a recommendation for any painters who are amateur or otherwise going and they're scared to do plein air painting? I mean, wh- what's the reason to get outside and get in the rain and all that and force yourself to do all these awful things? <laughs> and also, by the way, all those painting supplies are kind of heavy, too. <laughs> um, wh- what do you think, what, it, what does it do for you that indoor painting might not do for you? Heather? There's a ton of things. Um, first of all, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the things that I think, and whether Randy knows it or not, it sells his work, too, is the atmosphere that's created. I mean, I've had people say to me, I can hear those leaves crunching under my feet, or I can smell that air, or I can... And I think that in your studio, you don't get that mm-hmm. as much, unless you've learned it well, and then you can come back to your studio and you know what that means mm-hmm. now in the mm-hmm. terms of paint. Another thing is, you can, I can always tell when somebody's working from photographs, because a photograph is stagnant and it takes a shot. If you're standing out in the field and you want to paint the top of the tree, you can look up. The head moves up, and there it is. A whole big world up there with the top of the tree. The head moves down. The head moves to the left or the right. Something's back there. You don't know what it is. You move your head around, and you can find it. Love but it. I do think that one of the... And lots of people have asked me to teach them, and I haven't done it yet. I'm thinking about starting, maybe just with kids. I don't know. Uh, people are afraid, and I think the fear isn't so much of the paint. I think it's the same fear that I had that I knew I had to conquer with people looking over your shoulder, making comments. And for me, the fear is, is about, uh, will I change the work? When somebody makes a comment, will I do it different? Well, both of you seem to have met that challenge. Uh, as everybody, I've seen so many people look over your shoulders. I don't know how you do it. Hats <laughs> off to you guys. Um, I had a question that I was going to ask you, but I think that I've got to get back to this ending or else I'm going to get into a time trouble. Um, Anyway, um, I just wanted to... Actually, I think I've got a whole minute. I, real quick, if you had one artist to spend an hour with, um, and you don't, don't worry about the time zone, that they're dead or anything or like that, or that they don't speak your language, who would it be? Just wondering. Randall? Uh, I would pick Andrew Wyeth, you know, just... Oh. Probably Heather might too. <laughs> she will. I, I have a deep worship for all the, the yeah. Wyeths because I can relate to their footprints, but mine would be Picasso. Mine would be there Pablo. I'd be in Pablo's head, his mind, his laws of physics. Maybe him, yeah. maybe for one hour. He, no, he studied <laughs> Einstein. He actually sent spies out to spy on the theory of relativity. His cubism is about the connection of all things. I would love it. Andrea? Well, I would do Van Gogh. I've always just had a soft spot for Van Gogh. I saw uh, the exhibit years ago in the Philadelphia uh, Museum of Art, and I just have loved him and his eclectic life and his love story with his brother. You know, I just, oh, I, love I just too. love that whole. I would love to have a conversation with him. Well, thank you all very much for thank coming you. here. Thank, thank you, you audience, mm-hmm. for listening today and bearing with all of our sniffles. Um, definitely check out Gallery 222 at 222 King Street in Malvern and Heather Davis's opening on the 12th of January. On the first Wednesday of February, that's February 1st, my guests will be artists and teachers John Baker and Carl Kerner. Very cool. Next week, Wednesday, January 11th, Jane Pisicelli's guests on Living History will be Matt Johnson of the Chester County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all for tuning in to Living History.